Diane here. Um, today's class, we're going to talk about core strength and balance. So let's sort of start our practice by finding where balance is on our seat. Moving our weight forward, then rolling and moving the weight back. Now shifting over to the right, coming through center over to the left and beginning to make small Sufi circles with the low spine and making those circles smaller and smaller until you come to find perfect balance, left side, right side. Now sitting tall, softly close the eyes and we'll do a quick check-in with the breath. Noticing the breath as it moves through our body, imagining each inhale coming up the front body and each exhale running down the back body. Bringing our awareness into our core, into our spine. Now, softly open your eyes. Let the room come back into focus. And we'll begin some gentle movements to the body. If you're in the chair, hands come grasping either side of the chair for stability. For some alternate knee lifts, pressing down the left foot as we bring the right knee up, right foot down, left knee up, right knee up, left knee. Just a few walking in place movements to not only warm up the legs, but begin to wake up the core muscles. One more right, one more left, and then press down into the mat with the left foot. Lift up that right knee any amount, and we'll do some gentle ankle rolls. Yogi's choice, left to the left or to the right, doesn't matter going as slowly or as quickly as you need, and then reversing the roll. Beautiful, healthy ankles are a key to good balance. Now let's press the right foot down into the mat and lift that left knee for ankle rolls on this side. Noticing that it's gonna be different, left side, right side. We're symmetrical, but we are not identical. Now if you haven't already uh, switched the direction of that ankle roll, do so. Great. Press that left foot down. Now keeping the hands on either side of the chair to stabilize you, sit tall, belly button in and up, and we're going to bend and extend the legs. So bringing that right knee up first and then launching the right leg out long and strong. We'll do a few bend and extends here. Bend and extend. And as you extend out, think about pulling those toes toward the shin and reaching the heel out and away. Beautiful. Now the next time we're all extended out on the right side, let's do a little point and flex pointing the toes like a ballerina, then pulling the toes back toward the shin and reaching the heel out strongly up and away. And then re-bend that right knee, press the right foot down into the mat, lift the left knee and it will bend and extend on the left side. Bending, extending, Feeling with each press up and away, all of the muscles, the calf, the hamstrings, getting a nice warm up.
And the next time, we'll all meet up with our left leg extended for point and flex on this side, pointing the toes strongly away from our face. Feeling the top of the foot, the front of the ankle, the shin, with each point, getting a little extra TLC with each reach of that left heel, out and away, the calves, the hamstrings, the back of the knee. All right, perfect. Now let's bend that knee, press down. Now, if you've got a block handy, grab it and place it either between the knees or between the thighs, whichever works for you, long side, for some yogi sit-ups. We'll bring the arms out, bend the elbows, knit the hands together to make a nice basket or a catcher's mitt for the back of the head. Now, sitting up tall, extending the spine, reaching the elbows out to the side wall. Take an inhale and on the exhale, we're gonna curl toward that uh, block between the legs, aiming the nose. And as we do that, we're bringing the elbows together. And we'll reverse that as we roll back up using the core muscles. We're gonna fan the elbows wide, open up the heart center. So we're curling down, aiming the nose at the block or the space between the legs. And then fanning wide as we come up. So we'll do one more yogi sit-up. And the good thing about yogi sit-ups is we do them slowly. So we're working everything. The next time you are sitting up tall, we'll take a breather here. Fan those elbows out wide. Now we're gonna go to the left side. So lifting up tall first and then turning from the left side of the belly to the right, we're gonna crunch down, bringing the elbows closer to one another, over to the left, coming back to the center, fanning wide, then crunching over, aiming the elbow at the right elbow at the left knee, and then the left elbow at the right knee, and going slowly so that we are using all of those core muscles. Beautiful job. So one more to the right, one more to the left. And then we'll all meet up in mountain pose. Let's release the hands. Take, you can take the block out from between the legs. Now, if you're on the mat, you can extend the legs long. And if you're sitting in a chair, just make sure that your feet are making good contact with the mat and you're sitting tall. So let's bring those arms up and overhead. Extended mountain pose. We're gonna start to get some length in the side body. Grab the left wrist with your right hand. And now just gently reach upward before coming over to the side. You might turn your head so that you're sort of looking at your left armpit, breathing into the length of the left side from the armpit down to the hip point. Then coming back up, releasing the hands, setting ourselves up again. Grabbing the right wrist with the left hand. Now, reaching up like you're reaching for a subway strap before now bending over toward the left side. So you're crunching up that left side slightly and feeling a lot more space in the right side body. Another way to flex our spine. And then coming back up and bringing the arms back down to the side. And breathing into that.
If you're on the mat, you can bend both knees and bring the legs together wherever you are or a simple twist. And then lift the heels up off the mat so that, I mean the legs off the mat, sorry. Bad cue. And flex the feet. And we're gonna do the same thing here, except we're in the chair. Press down into the mat, press the legs together. Sit up tall. Now we'll bring the left palm to the outside of the right thigh. And Edie will bring her right arm out onto the floor to anchor her and then let those legs go out to the left, placing her left palm. Our right fingers are anywhere behind us where we can lift up tall. And if your neck allows it right now, you can look over that right shoulder and breathe in a simple twist. Very good. Coming out of it, we'll release our hands, head, neck, and shoulders. Edie, come back to center. Lift up tall. Palm, right palm goes on the outside of the left thigh. Edie is grounded in her left arm and she's got the right hand on her thigh and she's gonna drift out to the right. And everybody just breathe into that gentle twist. And if you're in the chair, you can look over your left shoulder if that works for your neck today. Just breathe. Now releasing the head, neck, shoulders, the hands. Edie, come back to center. If you're on the mat, just gently roll over to the right or the left and press yourself up into tabletop or all fours position. Now, if you're in the chair, you don't have to do anything except separate those legs so that they're hips distance apart for opposite arm and leg lift. Left leg comes up in the chair or out back behind if you're on the mat and that right arm comes up in the air if you're in the chair or out in front of you if you are on the mat, super. Now let's bring that left leg down and that right arm down and we'll do the opposite. Left arm comes up in the air, right knee up or leg out and arm forward and come back. We'll do that just one more time. Left leg, right arm. Left arm, right leg. Sort of a brain game. And it's working the heck out of your core, which is so important for balance. Now, if you're in the chair, move your weight forward slightly, heavy in the heel, we're going to get up. If you're on the mat, just stay in all fours until it's time to come to downward facing dog. I'm going to move my chair so that you can see what I'm doing. If you're doing the chair version, come to the back of the chair, place your hands on the top of the chair if you're in the chair, you're just going to walk back to a 90 degree angle. And if you're on the mat, you're going to pop the knees off the mat. Press the outer hips back into your downward facing dog. You can keep a bent knee 
right now if you want before landing into your downward facing dog. Now, whatever dog you're in, let's pull that belly button in and up, dome the back, become heavy in the left leg, and we'll launch the right leg up in one-legged dog, any amount. Now you feel that your weight is heavier on the left side. All right, bring that right foot down. Heavy in that right leg, press down. Launch the left leg up and back any amount. Now you're heavier in the right leg. Hip points looking at the mat. Beautiful work. Bring that left foot down. And if you're in the chair, simply walk up to the chair. And we'll breathe, and, if, and we'll breathe in mountain pose. If you're on the mat, come down to either puppy pose or child's pose, yogi's choice. Child's pose, bringing your hips back to the mat, to the heels, choosing to extend the arms. You can come up on spider fingers and feel your shoulders open. You can actually do that on the chair. Just breathe in here in a recovery pose. Now, if you're in the chair, we're going to come around to the front of the chair. So I'm moving my chair, and if you are in on the mat, you can come to a standing position, make your way to a standing position in any way you would like. And I'm changing my mind. We're going to do a chair pose flow. So I am going to be facing Evie. And I want you to see the hips moving back. So roll those shoulders up, back or down one time. Sinking down heavy into the mat. Even here standing, keep your chair close to you. We can pitch forward slightly onto the balls of our feet. Feel that. Come back. Feel heavier on the heels. Move your weight so that you feel heavy in the outer edge of that right foot. And then move through center so you're heavy in the outer edge of that left. Beautiful. Now just make a very, very tiny circle or two. And when you feel like you're even, left side, right side, stop. You're at balance. Now we're going to play with balance a little bit. So. Bring those arms. We're gonna to go to chair pose. And I am going to back up so that I am a little bit closer to my chair in case I decide I would like to sit actually in the chair. Bring the arms out in a wide T first and really open up that chest. Now flip the palms so that you're looking at the ceiling. Bring the palms up into a wide V. We'll bring palms together, and as we draw the palms to the center of our chest, we're going to sit back in the chair, moving the hip bones, or moving the outer hips back. And then let's do a few of these a little bit more quickly into this flow. And as you're doing this, you can always peek down a little bit and see that you can see your toes. That's a good clue that you have shifted your weight back and you're heavy in the heels. Now the next time, let's just take a breath in the chair. Now we're breathing here and you can choose to switch it up by bringing the arms out, bringing the arms up. So the biceps are in line with your ears 
and we'll all like we press an elevator button. We're just gonna rise up slowly and bring the arms down to the side. And take a breath here. I'm going to move the chair again for tree pose. We're gonna to continue to play with our balance. I'm coming to the left side. I've got my left hip against the chair. My hand, my left hand is on the chair. Edie is in the middle of her mat. But we're all going to first check to see that we do have mountain pose right now. Rooting down and lifting up. You can even bring the right hand to the right hip. Now keeping the mountain pose in that left foot, let's bend the right knee, come up to the right toe tips, swivel out to the right, smush the toes and the ball of the foot into the mat as you land the right heel over the left ankle. This is a good time to fire up the glutes, pull the belly button in and up, lift the center of the chest, and dare I say it, smile. You are in your tree pose. Now, you can stay here, or you can grow branches by bringing your arm out in that wide T, coming up to a wide V, or bringing the hands together at the center of the chest. Excellent. So we'll release the hands, swivel the knee forward, and then shake it out by pedaling, walking in place. I'm coming over to the other side of the chair. Edie does not have to move. My right hip is at the side of the chair. I'm grabbing the top of the chair with my right hand. Left hand on left hip. Feet are hips distance apart. I'm grounding down while lifting up. Bending, keeping the mountain pose in the right leg, that's our anchor leg. Bending that left knee forward, swiveling on those toe tips out to the left. Placing the left heel above the right ankle. And then pressing the ball of the foot down, the toes down, making a nice little kickstand for us. You're already in your tree pose. You can stay here or you can add on to it by growing branches on this side. Coming up into a wide V. Bringing the hands together at the center of the chest. And breathing. And releasing by turning the left knee forward planting the left heel and making your way down onto the mat in a, um, in a seated position. And I am coming back to the chair. So there's nothing fancy about it. Just as you were in Sukhasana at the beginning, and if you're in Sukhasana or the seated, comfortable seated pose, to make it comfortable, please do make it comfortable by putting a bolster under you, if you wish. And we're just going to cool down with some cat cows. Eating on the mat. You can just keep your hands right where they are. Keep your elbows loose for a cat cow. And if you're in the chair, simply put your palms on the tops of the thighs. Lifting up tall, whether you're on the mat or in the chair. And now rolling on the pelvis, we're reaching the tailbone toward the back and reaching the center of the chest, the heart center toward the front keeping the head relaxed. Here we are in cow. And then reversing this by tucking the tailbone, the imaginary kitty cat tail between the legs, arching the back deeply, relaxing the head, 
coming into our cat. So just at your own speed, we're just gonna cruise back and forth. Remember, this motion comes from the rolling or the rock and rolling of your pelvis with each cow. You're reaching the heart center and the belly button forward, creating a deeper curve in your low spine. And with each cat, you're curling and you're pressing the low back inward. And said differently, with each cow, the shoulders are moving away from the hip points and with each cat, they're moving closer. And if there's only one yoga pose you can do per day, this is the one to do. And we'll all meet up in either comfortable seated or seated mountain pose. Now, if you're on the mat, you can come into a seated position with the legs forward in a seated constructive rest position. Yeah, perfect. Constructive rest, feet flat on the mat. Now let's just squeegee our feet so they're a little bit wider than the hips. And if you're in the chair, basically your heels are in line with the legs of the chair. If you're in the chair, we're gonna grab the sides of the chair, press down, lift up for windshield wiper legs. So whether you're on the mat or in the chair, on the inhale, you're coming to the center. On the exhale, both knees are going out to the left or the right. You're rolling on the bottoms, the soles of your feet. Beautiful, it's a nice, nice way to unwind those hips. So we'll do one more to the left, one more to the right. Come back to the middle. Now let's heel toe the feet back so they're in line. The heels are in line with the sit bones, hips distance apart. Now everybody bring the arms out in that wide T, palms up toward the ceiling, reach up into that wide V. And we're gonna fold from this hip raise. We'll just fold forward and wrap our arms around the legs and let the head go. And it's just a little bit different way to experience child's pose. And it's a great way to observe the breath in your back body. Just breathing here. So we'll reverse our way back up. If you're in the chair, you're gonna plant that right palm on the right thigh, left palm on the left thigh. And we're just gonna reverse swan dive back up to seated position. And if you're on the mat, feel free to recline for your favorite Shavasana or final relaxation pose. So Edie's chosen one of my favorites, which is bent knees and knees knocking. Now, if you're in the chair, you might find the easiest and the most comfortable is to simply slide back so that you feel completely supported by the back of the chair, by the seat of the chair. And all there is to do is to close the eyes softly and to come back into the breath. No muss, no fuss. Just letting yourself settle, settling your bones, whatever is touching the prop, the chair, the mat. Feel that you're supported by that and you're additionally supported by the earth underneath that mat and that chair. Softening the face muscles, maybe moving the jaw from side to side, 
to loosen it up and then let the lower jaw drop away from the upper jaw. Softening the cheeks and the muscles around the eye. Softening the area between the eyebrows. Letting your gaze, your inner gaze, slowly travel down the bridge of your nose to the tip of your nose and then drop into the center of the chest, the heart center. And now simply let go, enjoy that beautiful breath of yours and let it take you home. Just breathe. first awaken in the morning. Let the room come into soft focus. Maybe wiggle your fingers and toes or roll your head from side to side as you slowly awaken. And if you're on the mat, you can bring those knees in toward the chest and then give yourself a little hug. And if you're in the chair, just come up toward the edge of the chair. And you can bring those arms around and wrap around and give yourself a hug, a well done for giving yourself yoga today. All you need to do in the chair is Sit here, eating, just roll to the left or the right, come to a seated position. Bring the arms up and overhead one last time, bring the palms together to the center of the chest. Thank you for joining us today for yoga and I do thank you for your excellent demoing skills. Thank you, Evie. Namaste.